Hi guys, welcome to my channel Rookies in London. This is another video of Cornwall. In this video, you will be seeing me going in a boat tour and some photos that I have taken in this tour. Please do enjoy this video. Thank you. G7 visited last year. Now, the Chicago Falls Estate has a rich history as well as its own deer park. It has the largest deer park in Cornwall, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Chicago Falls Estate has a rich history dating back around about 1334. It is best known for its British tea. Up until the 1800s, the house was home of John Boscowin. And the medieval house was actually ransacked during the 17th century during the English Civil War. It has an estate of around about 25,000 acres and it is not open to the public, only by pre bookings. And the name Dragoffin means the house at the head of the valley. And also, Dragoffin Estate starred in that BBC series on Paul Dark. That was when Captain Ross Paul Dark met Lord Falmouth. And it was filmed here in the grounds of the Dragoffin Estate. I mean, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I am, don't call me David Attenborough, but. On top of the canopy on this boat to the right hand side, not just we only have a Steven Seagull, but we also have an owl. It's been there for a few weeks now. Now, following the rest of the river to the left hand side, which naturally bends round to the left, takes you up past Mulpus and as far as the city of Truro, which is very, very tidal. And unfortunately, there's no more passionate about Lincoln New Farm of the Truro, ladies and gentlemen. They ceased trading about uh, two and a half years ago. 
Now, the vessel which you're traveling along, along with uh, two of her sister vessels, which still remain in Falmouth, were actually built for local family in Flushing. This vessel was built up at Blackmore's Yard up in North Devon, built in 1960. She was actually built and designed especially for the Truro River. She has spent her whole entire life since 1960 up until two to be exact, there's two creeks to my left. The creek that naturally bends off to the left hand side, that is known as and the creek that runs off to the right, that is known as Lambeth Creek. There's a very small key side to the left hand side which is separating those two small creeks. That is known as Roundwood Key. Parts of that key side dates back to the 13th century. We have a bit of wildlife here up ahead of the vessel. On the right hand side, on a large yellow coldy boy before it flies away, we have a large grey and white bird. Now we call these birds Stephen birds. Stephen seagulls. <laughs> Just carrying our way to the right hand side of the vessel, just see a large modern building. That's the Farm of National Maritime Museum. Built there in 2003 at a build cost of £33 million. Just see a big glass building to the right hand side, just sat on top of the hill, the big glass building, that's the Farm of Leisure Centre, these ships and castles. It has 287 windows and they are actually looking for a window cleaner if anybody wants a job. A large grey ship to the right hand side, the Argus. Uh, she belongs to the RFA, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. She is what you know as our hospital ship, ladies and gentlemen. You may have seen her on TV around about six years ago now. Um, she spent a good six months down the coast of the Sierra Leone fighting the Ebola outbreak. And I do believe she cleared about 6,000 cases of Ebola. The ship itself was built in uh, 1989. She weighs in excess of about 27,000 tons. She's actually based here in Farm of Lindsay German. Farm of his or her home port. And the Argus also starred in a uh, film, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that Brad Pitt made. Um, it was called World War Z, about the Azopoli apocalypse. When Brad Pitt was actually shooting the film, he shot some of it here in Falmouth on board the Argus to the right-hand side. As we was doing our river cruises, she had a big green screen around the flight deck. And Brad Pitt was here in Falmouth shooting some of that film. You can see her on that film, World War Z. I do believe she's called the USS America. Farmer Docks on the right hand side. Farmer Docks is a ship repair yard. It does a build in the ships. It handles a small amount of cargo, but it normally repairs and paints. We're just now approaching a large concrete jetty to my right. right-hand side we have the main dry docks here in Falmouth. The first dry dock with a big shed over the top that belongs to the Port Penn Dennis shipyard. That's where they build and maintain the multi-million pound yachts. Second dry dock to the right-hand side it has a large grey ship sitting inside that is known as a Queen Elizabeth dry dock that was opened in 
1959 by the Duke of Edinburgh, and that can take a ship up to 98,000 tons of weight. It was one of the largest dry docks in the country. The large grey ship to the right hand side, which is sat in the Queen Elizabeth Dry Dock, she's called the Line A. She belongs to the RFA, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. She is what is known as a landing craft ship. She can carry 50 tanks and 75 armoured vehicles. She was built in 2004 along with three of her sister ships. One of her sister ships, the Largs Bay, was actually sold to the Australian Navy about 10 years ago. 69 million pounds. The Line Bay on the right hand side, she weighs in excess of around about 21,000 tons. Waves again here on the right hand side, just sat in the middle of the harbour. You can just see a large pinnacle rock which is shaped like a traffic cone which is black in colour. That is known as a black rock that is built on natural rock. Before they built the pinnacle rock on natural rock, there was a large wooden pole with a red flag on top. Once a hazard to large sailing ships entering and leaving the port of Falmouth. Black Rock was built 18 Just Church, which is shrouded in its own subtropical gardens. As I said, it's why I went to visit St. Just of Roseland to the right hand side. Just now approaching Myla Harbour to the left hand side and Myla Creek. Myla Harbour was once used as a naval dockyard many, many years ago, a man made dockyard built there by the Americans during the war years. But as you can see, Myla Harbour is now used as a yacht haven. The yacht haven was as constructed there in 2002. Over 2,000 yachts used by the harbour here on the left hand side, right in the summer months. And it's actually well worth the visit. It has a couple of lovely little restaurants on the harbour itself, one in particular is called Castaways, which I do believe have a good menu. Myla Harbour is around about uh, five miles from Falmouth by road. So we are now just about to leave the Port of Falmouth and enter what is known as the Carrick Roads. We're going to be cruising up the Carrick Roads up the head of the vessel for around about 15 to 20 minutes until we reach Turnaround Bar, which is up the head of the vessel. Now shall we take you into lovely River Fowl. Now Falmouth Harbour is the third natural deepest harbour in the world, Sydney being the first, Rio de Janeiro being the second and Falmouth being the third. Falmer first got his name back in 1662 by King Charles II, but before that Falmer was called Snivick, and before it was called Snivick, Falmer was called Penny Come Quick. Now in a few moments ladies and gentlemen, we are going to encounter a little bit of swell, which is currently up the head of the vessel. Now this large motor cruiser you can see here on the left hand side, um, this is actually owned by Lord Lady Falmer. Now what ignorant people they are ladies and gentlemen, they may have all the money in the world but they're giving off a lot of swell so they're not, uh, they don't have any care or attention for anybody else on the water so in a few moments time we may count a little bit of swell so please be remain seated just for a moment or two. Lots of farm here on the right hand side with all these floating boys which are stretching up the head of the vessel. Each one of these floating boards are actually attached to the bottom of the seabed by rope. 
this is how the muscles cling onto the rope and grow. This is the first muscle part here with me laid in Cobble. Been up here down the River Fowl for around about nine years. I do believe it costs the Muscle Farm Company over £10,000 a year to keep this up here in the River Fowl. We have a bit of wildlife here on the right hand side. They have a large black bird just sat on one of those boys. Now some of you guys may call these birds Cormorants, but here in Falmouth we call these birds Cornish Penguins. seals here on the right hand side but unfortunately there's none here for a moment Just going to slow down for a moment or two, ladies and gentlemen. The chain ferry up ahead of the vessel is now crossing the river. I don't want to be uh, getting too close. I don't want to be caught in the middle of the chain reaction. Now the King Harry Car Ferry up ahead of the vessel, as you can see, she pulls herself side to side by two big chains. The King Harry Car Ferry was actually established up here in the River Fowl in 1888. It connects the Roseland Peninsula with Fiok. It saves around about 27 miles by road. This King Harry Car Ferry is known as number seven because it's the seventh ferry to be built for the King Harry Reach. She was built in Holland, costing 2.8 million pound to build. She was put into service on the 19th of April, 2006. She is licensed to carry 34 cars and she does around about 80 crossings a day and she weighs an assess of around about 300 tons of weight. is like a long line of bushes in the middle of the field. This is all owned by the Trigophil Estate. This is one of our smallest plantations up here in the River Fowl. This is where they grow their purchased tea. And if you look quite closely, you can see tea bags forming on the end of the leaves. Just now approaching uh, Smuggler's Cottage of Tolburn here on the right hand side, which is said to believe over 500 years old. Now the Smuggler's Cottage was once lived in and run by the local Newman family from 1934 up until 2010, until the Lord Lay Falmouth of the Trigoffin Estate decided to revoke their lease. <laughs> it is a great shame to see the cottage out quiet. Today. I have done my calculations here this afternoon, but if for any reasons why I've got it wrong and if we do get stuck, I'll have to ask one or two of you to take shoes and socks off, jump over the side and give us a push. So in a few moments we should be leaving depths of around about 120 feet and entering depths 
Hover on about uh, 18 feet 